yo, yo, welcome back to another episode of Texas Underground. I am your host, Jay Vaz, and as always, the show is brought to you by La Conecta. Make sure you guys check them out at shoplaconecta.com. We got the air fresheners, we got the cut energy drinks, Paquandes al Cien. They got the custom license plate, you know what I'm saying? Como chingas, they got Screwston. They got a lot of other cool different ones. You've probably seen this book. This book has been going around TikTok. All the Hispanic, Latino creators have been reading out of this book, including Concrete. Uh, they got those books. They got the lanyards. They got keychains. All kinds of cool shit. The hats. The hats are also brought to you by La Conecta. Make sure you check them out at shoplaconecta.com. This show is also brought to you by GT Digital Distribution. If you're an independent artist looking to take your music to the next level, make sure you hit them up and check them out at www gtdigitaldistribution.com let's get into it man joining us today this man is a, is a radio personality you might you you might have seen him you might have heard him um you your manager your ceo you're we're gonna get to know everything this man does to the man joining us today from a1 music dion what's up man man what's the deal man i'm blessed to be here jay Rash. yeah likewise man it's, it's it, you know I'm, I'm not a very very religious person but now that you say that uh, I was just having a conversation with somebody earlier, and I told them that. I was like, man, they were asking me about my religion. I was like, I'm Catholic, but I'm not, like, all in. I'm like, but one thing that I that I do feel is I'm blessed. I'm blessed, and every morning, I, I you know, I don't take it for granted. Every morning, I'm like, hey, thank you for another day, and let's roll with it. You know what I'm saying? Let's roll with it. We'll see what happens. But shut up. Man, so many questions. So many questions, man. We're going to dive into this today. So, you know, obviously you're representing everything. You're representing A1 Music. You're representing Texas 101. Uh, but before we get into all of that, let's take let's let's take it back. Let's talk about history a little bit. Um, you from Houston? Born and raised. Born and raised on the north side. Fifth Ward, Trinity Garden. Fifth Ward. Okay. So, Houston, born and raised. Um, Trinity Garden. This is north side. Okay. Okay. Uh, how was it growing up back then? Because I know around, around you know, early, what was it, 90s or something like that, we had a lot of north north versus south issues and shit like that. But um, growing up in the north side, being being obviously uh, Hispanic, what, what was that like growing up, growing up in those neighborhoods? It was kind of rough in my end because the neighborhood I grew up was predominantly black. Yeah. I didn't hang around with the Hispanics to middle school. I, I went to all black school, elementary and middle school. I got kicked out, and my mother sent me to this other school called Burbank Middle School off of Berry Road. And when she enrolled me there, I seen so many Mexicans it shocked me, because I saw I ever you know grew around was you know black people, yeah. my neighbors. The only people that in my neighborhood that looked like me were probably related to me, they were my cousins or somebody like that. But yeah, it was predominantly black man. It was rough, and and the and WA that rap started coming in, so my neighborhood was to me was like Compton. Because we're, they were gang banging already yeah. at that time. There was my hood was active, so you know it was it was something like Compton to me. Yeah, when you say rough, like, can you elaborate on that? What you mean by rough? It was rough, man. Um, you had the gang culture already coming in. You had um, the shootouts, the dope, the dope dinner. Mm -hmm. And I remember a time where you know my uncles they packed thirty eights, and when the dope scene started coming around. All of a sudden, you had Uzis, you had Tech Nines, you know. So everything changed. So turf war, drug war, all that. You know, I was in the, you know, the midst of all that. You know, gang culture. So, you know, a lot of people getting shot. You know, uh, murdered, um, robbed uh, um, on that on them drugs. On you know, yeah. on that crack. You know, crack era. Yeah. Um. All right. So obviously, you said it was it was a is a the majority was black people in that neighborhoods. What was that like being Hispanic in, in those early days? In the early days, you had some, you had to, to prove yourself because, like I said, it was rough. So you had to be, you know, you had to be out there. You had to be about, you know, them guys weren't going to play with you. So you had to make a statement, and, and that's that's what I did. You know, a lot of people know me personally, man, from um, fighting, uh, you know, cases as a young age, man. You know, I've been investigated for murder since I was 12, you know. Yeah. So I was I was you know I was active in you know at once upon a time. Yeah. Um. Man, that's that's wild. Twelve years old. Um. I was having this conversation. And I'm connected to that. Um. I tried to work at a correctional facility. I was there for about four days. This shit just wasn't for me because I was like I'm a fucking prisoner myself, man. <laughs> yeah. But you know what I'm saying? It's a correctional facility for um for teenagers. Uh. Well, actually, from the nine from nine to a day before they turn eighteen. 
then they would actually send them to the to the actual uh, prison. And I and you know I I got to meet a couple couple kids, and they're very open about their stories. And you mentioned about being twelve and being investigated for murder. I um I met this one kid. And he was happy to see me, first of all, because he said I was the only Hispanic correctional officer they've had in a while. <laughs> and he's like, they don't last. And then two days later, I quit. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, he was right. No, but uh, he was like, man, it's cool to have somebody that I can connect with or whatever. So right away, he started he you know started opening up about shit. And I'm like, what you, what you in here for, man? He's like, man, murder. Yeah. He's like, but I had no choice. And I was like, okay. I was like, I didn't want, I didn't, I didn't know how he feel about it. So I was just like, oh, okay, I, I feel you. He's like, no, nah, man, like it. I didn't mean to. Like, I didn't go out looking to kill this dude. He's like, I was like, I was, he told me his mom passed away when he was at early age. His dad wasn't in the picture. He's like, and I was out, you know, hustling, and motherfucker tried to rob me. He's like, but I didn't go out looking to murder somebody that day. I was out Trying looking to, to make himself. a living. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and it's like, I'm like, bro, how long you been here? He's like, bro, I've been here since I was 12. So how old are you now? He's at 16. He's like, I'm, I'm looking at 45, though. He's like, it's, it's. Like after this, I'm going to prison. He's like, and, and it's never ending. Yeah. And the reason I bring that up, man, because you know I had the conversation with him. Um, obviously, you know we are cameras and shit, so we really can't go in depth. Yeah, we, you know, because then you, they get on your ass about it. And I was like, fuck, I, I'm my day three. I ain't about to get fired over this shit. Yeah. But um, the reason I ask that is because obviously with him, uh, he did he did mention how, how traumatizing it was for his childhood and just the thought of being locked up for the rest of his life, basically. Yeah. And and I, I bring that up to ask you this, man, being that you were, you know, investigated at such an early age, what was that like for you as a kid to, to the idea of, bro, I'm 12, and, and, and if they find me guilty, like, I'm fucked, basically. Like, I, I'm in this bitch to, to yeah, God knows when. Me, me and my father, man, we never really got along. I was, I was a kid, he, you know, I was treated r real bad. Not uh, sexually, but mentally and physically. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And like we, we had a bad relationship. But anytime I ever got in trouble, he would he would go all out for me. You know? He, yeah. You know, but it, it was strange because we didn't have that you know that bond or anything. But you know, when that time happened, he stepped up for me, like you know, defended me and stuff. And you know, we fought it out. You know what I'm saying through this through the system, but um. It all started when my sister passed away. I was 11, finna be 12. When she passed away, I went, I went, you know, the gang uh, life, the culture, my neighborhood. I went, I, I went that life, you know. So I turned wild. I guess it was more resentment, cause I was like, God, you took the best thing that ever mattered to me. Yeah. You know, the the one that cares about me the most, it took care of me, my big sister. And for her to die in my arms, it it made me just, you know, rebellious, you know. Yeah. So that's that that started right there. That seed, you know, went to where, you know, it flowered to destruction. You know. Yeah. Um. We'll come back. We'll come back to to this, but but it caught my attention what you said about your dad not not having that bond with your dad, and, and I see how much you support your son, which we'll talk about him here in a second. But it's kind of like a blessing and a curse. I'm assuming, right? It, it's a blessing because now you learned that you need to be better as a father. But it's a curse because obviously you went through through that. But um, before we go into Ariel and his music and whatnot, um, how how did that experience with your dad help you for to be a father today? It helped me to uh, pinpoint the things in my life that that what I went through, the scars and, and emotions that I went through, that I would never do. I said like this: If you love somebody, why would you do him the way you know what I'm saying the way he did me? And that's, yeah, you know, like. That's how I look at it. Like my son, I have a six year old, and um, I would never give me that real. I wouldn't even do them the way I was done. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I was like, you know what? I never do what you know. What I'm saying done to me to them. So I, I, it just opened up to be a better father. Like you know what? I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna do my son like this way. I'm a, I'm a support. I'm you know what I'm saying? So you know that's what changed me, mold, mold me into a different person as being a father. You know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because cause like I said, I always find that interesting, man, because I know sometimes people use it as, use it as an excuse. Like, well, this is the way I was treated. And it's like, yeah, but I feel like you would want to be better. You know what I mean? Like, you would want to be better. Um, but before we get into a real and whatnot, so obviously you just say you grew, you, you grew up out in the, uh, Trinity Garden and whatnot. What was it like getting into the industry? At what age did you get into the industry? The industry, um, 
I I did been dabbled in it for a long time because in my neighborhood you had you had a KB from Street Military, you had Trinity Garden Cartel, you had Fifth War Boys, you had the whole rap lot camp, you know, little rascals. So you had some people that were already in, you know that were that I grew up with were famous, you know. So the street size, you know, I'm real known in my neighborhood not to be like, you know, I don't I don't like that image, man. But it, it's 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 there, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like people know me from being you know, a different person than, than what I am now. Like, when I got, got out of prison, I went to my friend's house, and uh, he was like, hey, man, uh, let me introduce you to my son. And I said, what's up? So I met his son, and I was going, I said, hey, let me use the restroom. He's like, he, he told his son, that's Dion. That's, and his son was like, that's Dion? That's the devil? And I was like, the devil? <laughs> so I put my homework to the side, like, man, why would you tell him that? He said, man, Dion, you was, I grew up with you. You, you know, you was out there, man. Like, you, you know, you want me? Yeah. And, I, and I, right there, I realized, like, man, yeah. I don't want to be known for that, man. I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to have that, you know, you know, that jacket or that rep, reputation, you know. I want to be like, man, you know what? That guy, he did, he had some, he did some stuff in his life, but he ended up, cha- he changed his life for the better, and he went somewhere with, did somewhere with his life, did, yeah. you know, say moved on. Yeah. Um, how long were you locked up for, and what, what were you in there for? Um. I started in 87, man. I started getting knocked up in 87. Um, shot somebody in the neck, you know. A uh, couple of shootings and stuff, man. And um, a boy's home, uh, U Village, TYC, um, uh, Juvenile. All, I've been through all that, and I've been to prison three times. So, yeah. you know, all them times, you know, it was just, you know, violence, uh, violent acts, you know. Everything was, you know, violent. I just got out in 2015. And that process, I was in, in wrapped up with the organized crime and two murders. So I end up, you know, saying beating the two murders, you know, and and going down for the organized crime and uh, did my time and came home, man. Yeah. What was that like, man? Because I, I I hear uh, a lot of stories like it's a good thing. Because for example, when you just said you come out, different perspective. Um, well, let me ask you before we get into that. How long were you in there for? This last time about. A little bit over five years. Five years? Um, Being gone for those five years, coming out to 2015, you know, a lot of things changed, but what was it like for you as far as trying to not go back to that person that went in? It's funny that you say that because I didn't plan it. I came home hustling. Mm. I didn't know. Right back to it. I didn't learn my lesson. (laughs) I, I stepped out. Hustling because I hustled uh, people that know me. I had you know cars, money, I, you know, since a kid. You know, I've been hustling forever. But um, you know, this time around, I can't. I jumped out, man, uh, hustling, and I got you know saying with my baby mother, and she was like, a few months I was out, probably like, probably like five or six months. She's like, I'm pregnant. Right there and then, I stopped. Like I did. I don't know what happened. I don't know. I think God just grabbed me and just you know sat me down because. Whatever I had left, I went and took it back and like, look, I, I don't want to do this no more. So my, my, my baby mom's pregnant. I'm going to work. I'm going to get a job. And I went to the plants and I started, ever since then, I've been, you know, on that path now. Yeah. Man, let me ask you this, bro. And it's something that I wish I would have asked my dad. I uh, never got the opportunity to ask him. So I'm going to ask you this. How hard was that? Because my dad, my, my dad used to do his thing. You know what I mean? And... When my brother passed away, he made him a promise mm-hmm. to be closer to the family and be closer to my mom. And he kept his word. And I always wondered how hard it had to be for him mentally to be financially stable, have financial freedom, buy whatever he wanted, do whatever he wanted, to having to get a job. How hard was that mentally for you? It's hard because you get accustomed to a lifestyle. You know, every every since every time I'm not incarcerated, I'm free. I've always had money. I did what I want, drove the finest cars. You know, did whatever I want. And it comes to where sometimes I'm struggling just to put gas to go to work, or or I, you know, I could pay. You know, my bills get catch. You know, they they pile up on me, and I have to, you know, figure them out. You know, by myself and stuff. So, you know, so it's it's hard, man. It's it's draining, and it, and sometimes we have that pride because. 
we're accustomed to, you know, that lifestyle so much to where our pride and our ego, we want everybody to think that we're still up and we're still, you know, you're still kind of, yeah. and, and that's not the case, man. Yeah. People struggle, man. People go through real life situations, man. It's yeah. hard. It's, it's, it's funny you say that because I think one of the, that was one of the, my, my dad's biggest problem. Like <laughs> he'll be working somewhere and if somebody talks to him, you know, how he felt like they were talking to him out of pocket man fuck this job like yeah. I don't need this job yeah. and he would quit on the spot and he would out and I was having this conversation with my mom and I was telling her I was like I think you know my brother switches a lot of jobs because he doesn't like the way people talk yeah. to him or whatever and I was like I kind of blame my dad for that so because he would always teach us to no andes trabajando cualquier pendejo don't be working for a motherfucker that's gonna be talking to you stupid you know what I mean yes. and, and obviously when my dad was around we didn't have that we didn't need to work yeah. right and then obviously now that he's gone it's like well, now you kind of got to work in it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you can't just be jumping from job to job. Yeah, they ain't going to work and, out. And, and I think that was one of the, for him, I think that was one of his biggest things that it was, his he was too prideful. And it was like, motherfuckers, I'm, I don't have to be in this fucking job. You know what I mean? Like, I can make shit happen outside of here. Yeah. But, and like I said, I wish it was a conversation I, I wanted to have with him. Uh, and it's funny because a couple of months before he had passed, I had the idea of, I'm going to take my, pop, my, I wasn't doing, what's I doing video? early stages of doing video, I was like, I'm going to take the fucking roadcaster, hook that bitch up, and I'm going to ask my dad, if, you know, if he can tell me his, his life story, you know what I mean? Because I knew, I knew bits and pieces of what he would tell us, but I never got into, I never got a lot of details, you know what I mean? And I wish I would have done that, and obviously, you know, he passed away, and it was kind of like, damn, I, sh I should have had that conversation with him, just to have that history, you know what I mean? Uh, to be able to share with, like, you know, my kids and shit. Um, but, so, you know, again, you, you got out of there in 2015. Uh, you got the job. As far as the music industry, were, were you ever involved in, in as an artist or anything like that? No, I was, um, I used to travel with a KB from Street Military. We used to, you know, he's my friend. So we used to travel like to all over Texas. And he was doing, at 2004 and five. he, he was doing the, uh, that Spin Venom album. So he dropped it. We're going everywhere, touring, you know, all over Texas. So I would ride with him and we would hit these shows. And next thing you know, we're in a different city and stuff like that. So at that time, we would hit the, there was the CDs were still, you know, popping. So we would go to the record stores. And I remember him having boxes and boxes. We would drop them off, you know, see him get money and, and stuff. So I knew a little bit, you know, about, you know, street team hitting the road, you know, you know what I'm saying? Promote, the real promoting. When you go out there, you know, yeah. posters and stuff and flyers, that's what, you know, Everything now is digital these days, but um, no, I never was an artist. Uh, uh, I could rap a little bit, you know, but um, I never was an artist or anything in that nature, man. I was just always around it. Yeah, um, and the reason I ask that because you know we we we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna get into here into your son, a real. Uh, obviously, if you guys don't know, a real is an artist out here in Houston, Texas, and, and and that was the reason I was asking because I I you know how how did he get involved into music as 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 far as he he goes? Well. Just one one day, man. He like I say, he was about fourteen, and uh, he came to me. He's like, "Dad, I want to rap, man." I was like, "I would have never thought, you know." But then again, he's gonna hate me for saying this. He used to do these videos on Musically and uh, and do these videos and dances and stuff, man. And I was like, <laughs> "I'll be like, look, when you get a little bit older, I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna, I'm gonna just, you know, I'm gonna show you what you used to do, you know what I'm saying?" Yeah. And stuff. So I would tease him, but one day he just said, "Man, Dad, I want to rap." I was like, "Let me hear, let me hear something." Yeah. He spit some stuff, spit some stuff. I was like, nah, I ain't gonna, I'm beyond, I'm, I'm, I'm be honest, nah, you ain't, you ain't ready, you ain't got yeah. it, man. You know, because I'm the type of person, if I go all, if I go in, I'm gonna go all the way with you. I'm, I'm gonna ride to the yeah. end. I'm gonna do whatever I can. So he knew about me having street ties to like, you know, a, a certain, you know, a few rappers from the streets. So three months later, he's, he comes back. He's like, dad, I'm, I'm ready. I'm like, you ready? Let me hear some stuff. So he, I said, it's all right. Let me hear something else. I said, okay. And then he kept on. I said, you know what? I think you're ready, man. So I said, you know what? I'm gonna start the, you know, the record label, A1 Music Empire. You know, you're gonna be the artist, and we're gonna, we're gonna, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna write it out. Yeah. So that's how it started. We started getting shows and stuff, and um, you know, he started doing this music thing, and he kind of like slowed down because. He's, he was real serious about his school. So yeah. He just graduated. So he would dip and dabble, drop a few videos and, you know, singles and stuff. So, but 
his album, we're like, you know what, we're going to package it and, and, and market it uh, well, you know. So I was like, you know what, we have, we have plenty of time, man. We, you know, we ain't in no rush. So he kind of slowed down. When he slowed down, I kind of like pushed forward. From that, from him doing the music, doing the big pokey show to the Bubba Sparks, and um, the show, um, we went to one show. They were having a audition, Juan Vasquez, you know, for the squad the movie. Yeah. So we went and we did the audition. And he did it first, and then uh, I went in there, and he's like, "Dad, you think they're gonna call us?" I was like, "Man, fuck no, they gonna call us, man." You know what I'm saying? They, you know. Yeah. So they did. A week later, hey, you, we're gonna be ready to film. Y'all, you know, y'all want to get in, there, man? We'd like to, you know, what I'm saying okay. So from there, it went from the movie thing, and one movie led to another movie. And it's been talks to like, you know, with the Leon films, I've been talking to them. So I'm casting to like two of their movies and uh, Video Vixen. We, I just did that one. Me and Reckless are doing one movie about uh, the H-Town culture. So we can, we, we're in the process of doing the, the script. So, yeah, we've been basically moving. From there, I ended up to, yeah. to a radio station and doing, you know what I'm saying, the radio show. Yeah. We'll talk about the radio show, uh, show here in a second. Uh, A1 Empire. Um What's the meaning behind A1 Empire and, and besides your son? Is there anybody else involved as far as being an artist? Um, yeah, we have. I have a a girl, I Am Problems, and uh, we have Jay Money. And my other son, he just started rapping uh, Zay Zay. He's, he's 15, so he's, he just started recently rapping. He just shocked me one day, too. He's like, Dad, I want to rap. I'm like, oh, you too? So <laughs> he went to end up going to the studio. I didn't even say, hey, let me hear it. Now he went to the studio where they real. They came back, and I was like, oh, man, he, I was like, yeah, everybody heard him. They're like, man, you know, he's yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's gonna be some you know, forced to not to be reckoned with too. So I'm like, man, it just it just damn damn. But I have affiliates. I have Tone Hood Life, Blue Jay, E45, yeah. you know, uh, Losi. Um, they're part of the A1 Music Empire family. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. They're not okay. with the label, but they're they're part of the family. We move. You know, sometimes when we move, we move as a unit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay, I got you. Yeah. Um. Now, as far as you 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 mentioned um the shows and the movies, is there anything else that you guys are involved, uh, you know, in the upcoming future, but obviously the music and, and the movies that you mentioned, but is there any other projects that you guys are involved with right now? Right now, it's just uh, basically um, shows, man. Uh, I've been in talks with uh, Fifth War Boys. We're going to try to do a, our own podcast, you know, because I do the radio thing and, and yeah. the, he's like, I don't want to do it. I want to do a podcast. So we're, we're, we're in talks of doing, that as we speak, you know, that's going to be something. And just the movies, I'm ready to go in the movie, the direction of the movies. Yeah. Because that one is kind of more broader, man. Yeah. You know? Especially like the short film industry has, yes. has gotten very popular here as of late. Um, Texas 101 Jams, how exactly did that connection come about? How did, how did you end up, you know, jumping in, jumping on there? Man, it, God uh, just led me in a direction, man. He hooked me up with a guy, Tomcat, man. Me and Tomcat, you know, you know, we're going through our thing, man, together and stuff. And he was like, "Hey, man, I got somebody want to give us a radio station." So we went, in, we went in there and had a meeting, and we ended up walking out with the, with the show. So he had some legal issue. He took off out of town, and um, you know, he can't. He tried to come back, but um, I don't know what happened with him and the the radio station. They kind of, you know, had some clash before, and then they were like, "Man, uh, I think we should just, you know, have you on there." And uh, but I guess they were, they were scared to tell him, and I had to tell him, hey man, they don't really, you know, they don't really, you know, yeah, they have, you're too controversial with them, and a lot of, uh, some artists, man, and you know, they're not they're not trying to have go in that direction or have that image, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like you know, part of the business, I guess you got to yeah. kind of understand it. Um, being that you know, like you say, you have all these uh, street ties and whatnot. How has them? Be how has that been beneficial? For the career of, of of your of your son and then your label and everything else you got going on, it's it's been helpful. Like um, Street Military, you know, uh, KB he, he got a song. He has a song with my son. I got um, Trinidad Cartel, uh, Slaughter, for uh, do some. He did some with Rashid. He's working on two songs with Ronnie Spencer, um, uh, Young Star. You know, what I'm saying we're waiting. You know, to do some with, with Young Star from SUC. Um, I mean, it just it was. The street ties is easy to put him in the, in that place. I had brought Little Flip to my radio station, and he sat across Little Flip and freestyled with Little Flip, you know, and that was like one of the moments in his life. Like, you know what, man, you're lucky that you have somebody like me that you know puts yeah. you in that position because not anybody that doesn't have a, a album or not known sits in front of this man and just freestyle. And with just start freestyling for him, yeah, yeah. Um, 
we'll ask Ariel more questions when you know whenever we have Ariel on here. But um, so obviously you got Texas one on one jams. For anybody that doesn't know, is not familiar with the radio station, what do you guys do at one on one? And and is it just hip hop or what all y'all guys got going on over there? It's R and B, hip hop. Um, they want to do a Spanish uh, side of it, like a Spanish show as well. But um, as for me, I do. It, I, if you got country music, I'm gonna play. You know, you yeah. come up there. I'm a I'm a guy that um, if you're serious about what you do, and if I can help you, I'm gonna help you. Yeah, and that's why I really got on, got on there because I know a lot of artists that don't have that exposure, Correct. access to the radio station, access to the songs getting played. So I'm one of them guys that they could come to and like, hey man, help me out. It's been a lot of times I put people on there and put them on the show. Or I had a guy not too long ago. He was like, I was doing an interview and I was like, well. What's the recording process on your, on your, on your future uh, project? He was like, man, I'm struggling. I ain't got no money for no studio time. So I said, you know what? I said, after this interview, man, I'm, I'm going to give you my boy's number, man. I'm gonna, this weekend, if you want, go to his house. I'm going to call him. You know what I'm saying? You go record, man. Don't let that stop you. So I've had access to my boy. has a, a, a setup at his home. Yeah. And he'll do, you know what I'm saying? He ain't doing nothing. So he's like, man, I, you know, I do favors for him. Shoot videos, you know, through my camera, man, for him. or do whatever, you know, yeah. barter. Some stuff help him out, so he does for me. Like, it's a change of service. Yeah, so yeah, he does it faithfully for me. I can send anybody, you know, and he they do. He'll record them or whatever. So help him out. I do that for a few artists. Like, hey man, go to my boy, man, and he'll um, shout to Slick. He um, records you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And, and the reason I ask that is because you know, uh, also I thought it was just more like a like a interview talk show type thing. I don't know. You guys actually play music there. Yeah, we play music. Uh, I play music. I promote your, your 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 songs. I break your songs. Like Lil Flip came up there. He dropped that three 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 album at the station. It was his yeah. birthday, so we threw him a little party and we broke it. It was his first time playing the songs anywhere, so we played it on the radio, you know, live. Yeah, that's dope. That's how dope. Um, so yeah, I, I I didn't know it was like actual music playing and stuff like that. So, so it's it's kind of like if you're listening to ninety seven nine. You know what I'm saying? So it's yeah, like it's kind of you know. I, I, have, open. I have people from UK, um, Hawaii, uh, Australia, people tune in, you know. Yeah, it's like online radio or is it exactly. or, or, online? Online, ra- online radio. Okay, that's dope. That's dope. Uh, where, where can people find um, Texas 101? Like, is there an app? Or yeah, there's an app. Um, uh, tune in, uh, tune in radio, or you, could, or you could download USA Radio. And then once you download it, you just put in, type in Texas 101 Jams, it'll pop up. Yeah. And you can listen. Yeah, that's dope. That's dope. And as far as the independent artists, how can they get their music to you? Um, they could just uh, hit me up on the IG, man, at Dion Garcia ninety eight or CEO of A One Music Empire, man. Yeah, yeah, that's dope, man. Because yeah, like I said, I I thought y'all were just doing interviews and whatnot. I basically thought it was like a podcast. Yeah. I didn't know it was like an actual full on, you know, online radio station. Yeah. Um, how does that work too, though? Like as far as we don't want to give away too much free game or whatnot. Uh, there is apps out there that let you run. Online radio stations, but how does that work as far as the copyright and stuff like that? Um, or do y'all just play independent artist music? We play. Um, you don't have to be independent. You could be a major artist. You know, like we have people. See that station right there, man, was more like a, a of underground radio station. But since I've been, I've brought like Lil Flip, uh, ESG, Ronnie Spencer, Fit World Boys, PSK Thirteen, uh, so on and so on and so on. You know, like I I brought them there. And um, it's been it's been like since I brought them there, it, the, it's moved up. You know, it's, it's kind of like people are noticing it more, man. Because I've been everywhere, and people are like, oh man, I see yeah. you everywhere. I, I watch your show, I hear about you, man, and and st- and stuff like that, man. Yeah. What's the bottom line mission for you guys over there at A One in, in the radio station, as far as you know, the music industry goes? The bottom line is, man, I'm just trying to. Be the guy, man, the next one that um, I don't care for for fame. I don't care for, you know, nothing, really nothing, man. My mission is if I could help a person and it's changed their life, I won because I feel like that um, I won. You know, like far as I might not be rich, but I'm rich in uh, heritage and family. I got my kids and, you know, I'm alive. I got my health, man, because I've been shot 13 times and I died twice. So I ain't yeah. supposed to be here talking to you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. any time, man, is better than no time, man. I'm, I'm, I'm blessed to be, have, be I'm like a, on borrowed time, man. I feel like I'm just here to save somebody, help them, man. And, and if I could, man, I'm that dude. Yeah. Yeah. 
No, yeah, I saw you were out there as, as well at uh at Zero's album listening party. How how did that come about? Yeah, my boy Emmett, um, shout out to Emmett Forrest, man. He owns a cigar bar out there, man, in Sugarland. He invited me out, and uh, I went out there, man, and um, it was a good vibe, man. You know, I seen uh, Lil Flip, Zero, and them there. Uh, D, my boy D Solo, uh, a lot of media was there, so it was a good vibe, man. I appreciate, yeah. man. I felt like I felt like a celebrity, man. Uh, talking to D Solo, man, come to talk to me. Uh, Lil Flip, when he seen me, gave me you know some some love and Zero, so. You know, these guys, are, you know, saying I have a kind of relationship with, so. Yeah. Yeah, th th that's why I was also wondering as far as how, how does that help, you know, level up and create the brand and whatnot, you know, yeah. knowing these people and, and having those relationships with them. Um, as far as A Real, man, what can we expect from him him the upcoming months? Man, he's jumping out. He has a show um, tomorrow. And um, I got the flyer, so if you could check it out on my page, uh, Dion Garcia 98 on my IG, but... Um, He's uh he's back in the lab, man. Um, he's already focused. He's ready. He's already enrolled to college. So now he's he's try he wants to transition to whatever life brings him. He's for the he's ready for the next chapter right yeah. now. So he's gonna go full fledged with his album. We already got everything lined up as far as his features and beats and stuff. So now we're gonna put it together. Yeah. And we we taking our time because I know a person, a friend of mine that dropped the album, and didn't do really no promotion. He just as soon as the album was done, he released it and he didn't do nothing. I want it to be where, you know, anticipated where the people know, and when they hear it, man, they see it coming. I promote it to the to the fullest extent, man. Yeah, that's dope, man. Um, and also like you know the fact that he he's all on, all in on his music, but as you mentioned, he's also going into college. Mm -hmm. That that's hella dope as well, just because ain't none of this shit promised. So it's also cool to have you know an education and and that something to fall back on. You know what I mean? Well, he's going to school for audio engineer, man, and uh. Filming, art, video grabbing. So, you know, he's he's going to school for what he loves. He loves the music. So that's what he's, you know, more or less he's going for to to do that, man. Uh, yeah. You know. It's like one way or another, I'll be stuck in this fucking industry. <laughs> yeah. that, that, that's what happened to me, man. I've been, I've been fucking in this industry since 16. Yeah. Uh, going on 20 years now. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and music and then got into the graphic sides and then, Media and it's like as long as I'm in, in the middle of music, I love music. You know, whether it's Spanish, English, whatever the hell it might be, I try to find my something that I'm actually happy doing. You know what I mean? And and, and shit, that's that's how we're here, man. Um, before I let you go, man, where can people find you on social media? And where can they find everything you guys you guys got going on? Man, you can find me at uh, Dion Garcia ninety eight man on IG. You can find me on um, Facebook, Dion Garcia. You can find uh, A Real on YouTube if you want to look at his videos. A Real So Trio 75. A Real. Make sure you guys check him out on all social media pages. We'll have the link on the description of the video, description of the podcast. Uh, as always, make sure you give them a follow. Uh, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Bro, I appreciate your time. Thank you for stopping by. And um, make sure you check them out at one, uh, Texas 101 Jams, A1 Music Empire. And again, all those links will be on the description of the podcast. I'm Jay Bass, and you're watching Texas Underground. Let's go. Go.